Hey there, this is Nick with another Builder Trend tutorial. And getting back to basics today, I really want to talk about how we can gain tremendous value from just a few really good features within Builder Trend. Now, by far the most common question I get when people are either debating getting started on Builder Trend or they already have Builder Trend, they're not sure what the next move is. The most common question is, where do I start? All right, the software is very, very good. It's very comprehensive. They've thought of so much that goes into a remodeling or a construction business, and it can be overwhelming and it's complex in certain areas. So one thing we wanna think about is how can we gain value from the software without giving ourselves overwhelm, right? Where do we start to get value from the product? Now, as is the case with most software, as we start to use it and we find that it's valuable to ourselves, to our customers, we gain momentum and then we can start adding on other features, right? We need to start small. We don't want to try to do everything all at once. So I wanna talk about right now, during this quick video, where to start and how we can gain tremendous value from just a few specific features within Builder Trend. If you do nothing else, I want you to come away with this video with the task of getting these few features up and running, okay? We're gonna focus on project management. Without question, this is our biggest bang for our buck. Not only is it the easiest thing to do in Builder Trend, but it is the most valuable to ourselves and to our customers. We think about project management, okay? Financials are very important. Communications, very important, absolutely. But the project management aspect and the simple aspects of this project management are so, so essential. So we wanna focus on these three features to start. Schedule, daily logs, and documents, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate this. I'm gonna talk about why in a little bit. I've got a video on scheduling, and during in that video, I talk about how it drives the bus, right? Everything's related to the schedule. If you use nothing else in Builder Trend, schedule should be the thing that you use, okay? Daily logs and documents come next, and then the next steps, to-dos, selections, change orders, okay? But I want to focus on these three, schedule, daily logs, and documents. And there's two reasons I want to focus on them. One is for the ease of use, and two is for the value it provides to us and our customers, okay? And our goal coming out of this is that we want to use these top three features 100%. So I want you to watch this video, and I want you to think about where you're at within your Builder Trend journey. If you've started Great, if you haven't, I think you should. The software is going to take you places, right? But as you get going, I want you to come away with us thinking, these top three things, let's use these well, let's use these 100%, okay? And then we can move on to the others. Let's talk about it in Builder Trend, okay? So I have a job up here and I wanna look at these three features. And again, I have a deep dive on how the schedule works. I wanna reiterate why it's so important. I'm gonna go to the schedule right here. If you're not using schedule yet, you shouldn't do anything else in Builder Trend. I really feel strongly about that. Don't come into Builder Trend and think, oh, it's a great estimating tool. I'm going to create my estimate there. It is a decently good estimating tool, and we can use that, that piece of the functionality. But if we don't have the schedule, so many other things are turned off. Okay, Schedule is really the linchpin of this whole thing. Okay, Now, it can take some time to build a really good schedule. Of course, templates are really helpful for that, but templates can get a little overwhelming too. We start to think about, well, is this gonna make it to the template? Is that gonna make it to the template? Forget templates for now, for now, right? I want you to take one project that is either about to start or it's kind of in the beginning stages and it can be saved, right? We can, we can work on it to kind of get it to where we want it to be. I want you to take one project, I want you to go to the Gantt, the Gantt chart view. I think week is a really good way of looking at things. I just want you to start to visualize your schedule. If it's not on here yet, start building it out. Take a half hour, 45 minutes to build out a nice, strong schedule. Reference my scheduling video if you want some tips on how to do that, but I want you to build out a nice, strong schedule. Now this one is uh, filtered on incomplete. If I can just get everything up for a second, you can see what that might look like, okay? <clears throat> so schedule might look something like this. Alrighty, so um, I'm gonna go back to um, incomplete for a second. It's my default view. All right, so what makes a good schedule? For one, it's comprehensive and it's to the level of detail that we can actually work in. So it's probably the hardest thing to get right about a schedule is how detailed do we want it to be. So hanging and finishing drywall, you can see that's one task item here. There was a day where we used to have hang drywall two days, finish drywall three, four days, whatever in a dependency. And then we kind of thought about it a little bit. It's like, well, it's the same person doing 
the task. I mean, it's the same subcontractor doing the task. Does it really make sense to separate that out? And in our case, we ended up simplifying it and really just, no, it doesn't make sense to, to separate it out. However, you notice that I got prime drywall and paint ceilings. That also used to be separate. I used to have prime, I used to have uh, paint ceilings, and I'd, I'd have all these little things moving around and, and I'm trying to, to, to make them all dependent. And then we realized that, hey, it's the same person doing this and they usually kind of do it all in one in a couple days. And they may or may not coat the walls. And one thing that's really crucial is that this prime drywall and paint ceilings, that is a key definitive uh, predecessor to us laying floor tile, installing cabinets, etc. So I did want to separate this one out for sure. Okay, and, I, and I've done that. All right, so the level of specificity must fit the way your project actual, actually works. You don't want to create it so it's so specific that we don't, we don't do it. Okay, and we want to build in some dependencies. These dependencies don't need to be super tight, but what's essential is that if and when something at the front of the schedule, the early part of the schedule moves, I'm going to turn this off for a second. If I were to move this, I want to see the schedule update. Everything should move with it, right? That's kind of the, the key, okay? Let me move that back, okay? This moving moves the whole schedule. That's really the essential part of these dependencies, right? And we've built this awesome map that like, this is where we come when we want to know what the heck is going on with a project, right? What is happening? Where are people going to be? I love using phases. I want you to think about the phases that make sense to you. One thing that I love about phases is right now I'm looking at a pretty granular view. I can see week by week what's going on. I love to hit the arrow on this to see all the phases. And then if I open up my calendar a little bit to kind of go month, I can really get a good idea of what's going on with the project. And if I'm bringing in multiple projects at a time, right, I can really see what's happening. Now I don't really work in here. That's not really helpful for me to kind of do my work. But if I go back into week then and open these up, now I can see and click and move around. Right. And as we talked about in our schedule, the key to this is that there's so many things that are linked to this as well. So we can link our financials to this. A bill is due when a item here is complete. An invoice is due when an item here is complete. We can build that out. But I don't want to work on that stuff until I feel really strongly about my schedule. Get your schedule locked in. You should be coming here every single day. Your production team should be looking at this and your team should trust it. I also lived in a place where I was the only one messing with this a little, you know, for a while. And the team, I'd say, hey, why don't you look at Builder Trend for the schedule? And they say, well, it's never updated. It's not accurate, right? So we better be accurate with it. You know, update it regularly. Make sure your customers know. I think the schedule should be online. I'm a big proponent of that. Um, make sure that your customers know that it changes daily. Things move in and out. Don't worry about that part of it. We will um, update you if there's big issues, but you should definitely have your schedule and create a culture where the schedule is where we go to find out what the heck we're working on. I love the Gantt chart view. All right, that's first. Second, daily logs. Now this is probably the simplest feature and the most valuable feature. This is what customers in our experience love the most about Builder Trend, and it's so interesting because it's like the simplest feature there is we got all this cool finances and budgeting and invoicing and pictures um, on our documents all that stuff but the daily logs is where they come right and i would implement a 100 percent daily log uh, strategy what i mean by that is that every day that the project is going every work day that the project is going you should have a daily log even if your team is not on site you should have a daily log. So who is it on your team who is responsible for those daily logs? Is it a project manager? Is it a lead carpenter? What is the process through which we are establishing accountability for this, right? If we don't assign somebody to it, it's not going to get done. So we've established a lead carpenter model. Lead carpenters are responsible for creating daily logs and the project manager is responsible for creating a daily log if and when the um, lead carpenter doesn't add one, okay? I also would recommend that you create a, hey, pictures are always encouraged. Pictures might be a requirement if we're on site. So I say if we're on site or not. So like we might create a daily log where nothing's happening. It's a work day, but maybe we're waiting for concrete to cure. Create a daily log and indicate that, right? That way every single day, 100% compliance, you have something in there. You, your customer can always reflect back. If you reflect back and you look at a daily log that's blank or a day that doesn't have one, did we forget or was nothing going on? What was happening here? If we train ourselves and our customers that every single day we get a daily log, us seeing that there isn't one means we probably forgot. 
The other thing you can do with daily logs and some new features that have come from it are that we can relate to do's to them, which is awesome. So we can say, hey, coming out of today, we have this to do to do, okay? Which is great, it brings in the photos, it brings in all the relevant context of that daily log. We've also created some custom fields to allow ourselves to use daily logs for meeting notes. So a really common thing we have to do in construction is rough electrical walkthroughs, other kind of walkthroughs. We have those meetings. And if we have a day where we have one of those meetings, we're gonna indicate rough electrical walkthrough. There's my meeting topic. I can click the button that it's a meeting, which that allows it to show up in my search. I can add my meeting notes in there as well. And of course I can link to any meeting notes if I'm using some kind of external software for that. Okay, super useful. I'm not going to save this one. So use daily logs that, again, the customers love it. I'm going to pop open the customer view for a second. That's like the first thing they're going to look at, especially if you have a customer who is not um, living in the house, which is common, right? If you have a big project, somebody's living, renting a place or something like that, right? Here's an example of um, some meeting notes, right, that you can attach to your daily logs as well. Let me see if this one's got it as a meeting. Yeah, so um, super useful, right? Daily logs. Okay, next, documents, okay? Now I deviated a little bit from our project management tab, okay? There's plenty of other good things in here. I put those as the next steps. I think that having all your documents in Builder Trend is an amazing place to start. Again, really easy, really simple, and super valuable. I think less valuable than the actual document manager is the idea that there's a single place to go for documents, right? So I think their document management is okay. It's pretty good. It's gotten a lot better. It's probably not as good as like Google Drive and I can create links and sharings a little bit easier. I know that that is a really valuable tool. Dropbox is great as well. But if we can instill a culture where, you know, everything we're doing is in Builder Trend, including documents, we are going to gain a lot of buy-in. Hey, where's that doc? It's in BT right? Builder trend. Instead of thinking about our field crew, think about our customers. We can do QR codes, all that stuff. Create a really strong and really simple document hierarchy. I've got three folders that go into every single project we do. I've got an internal folder that's just for us. Nobody needs to see anything that's in there. Okay. That's whatever we need it to be. Okay. And then client shared is really between us and the customer. That's our, that's our contract. That's our um, estimate. And then I've got architect and designer. That's going to be any kind of design and build docs, right? So everything being in here is going to be so essential, okay? Now, one thing that Builder Trend has done, they've gotten a lot better at version history. Okay, so it used to be you'd have to upload a bunch of versions, name them all. Now they've gotten a lot better where it's like, I'm gonna upload a document. If and when it changes, we're gonna upload a new version. And that way we understand the whole course and what changed. And what we like to do too is when we upload a new version, indicate what those changes are, okay? Uh, let's see here, viewer notifications, just saying of the history. If I can download it, let me just look here. So I can download that one. All right. Yeah, so you can see here we had a few different versions of the same doc. All right, having a really strong document management system is awesome, right? Now we've set it up so we got architect, designer, we got the different bathrooms, different rooms, whatever that is. One thing that we do too um, is on our photos, which is kind of documents, but it's a little bit different, we've got our pre drywall photos. We've established a process through which we're standing there pre-drywall with a tape measure to establish where everything is. Okay, so we look at the kitchen, for example, and we have our drywall pictures, our pre-drywall pictures before we hung drywall in the kitchen. We got all of our rough-ins, you know, we can see everything that we need to see. It's a really cool process that we have and we've established that folder hierarchy. So photos are pretty much a subset of documents, so I definitely would recommend setting that up as well, all right? So there we have it, the top three things that you need to implement within Builder Trend today because one, they're super easy, they're really simple to do, there's not much complexity there, and two, we get tremendous value. I would tell you that our team and our customers, the three features that I showed you today, those probably comprise 85 to 90% of the Builder Trend use. That's how much value we're getting out of these three things, and the good news is they're so simple. There's so much else the system can do, and we will do all of that, and I will teach you how to do all that. There's so much value in doing it and having it wholly comprehensive, but we should start simple. We don't wanna get overwhelmed with all the amazing features of this product. 
we want to ensure that the simple things are done right. So we get tremendous value and then we build off of it. Think of the building blocks. I wanna know from you, what questions do you have on Builder Trend? What haven't we answered yet? What should be the topic of my next video? And do you have any questions or comments or thoughts about what we've shared here today? What is your top three? Or how do you find these features to be really useful to you and your business, right? So looking forward to continuing on with this series. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video.